Hello and welcome to another bite-sized episode of the Sports Grad Podcast, proudly supported by Deakin University. Each Thursday, we give you the tactics you can use to land a dream job in sport. This includes things like networking, interviewing, and my personal favorite, career direction. But like, like all these things, they are all to do with sport, our beloved sport that Ruben and myself have both worked in in our careers. So I'm Ryan Walker and I'm joined by my beloved Ruben Williams. G'day Ryan, great to be here. Great to see you as well, mate. Now for more regular content, follow us on LinkedIn and Instagram and TikTok. Just search sports grad. Plus a big hello to all our beloved sports grad community members who are mixing and mingling on Discord. If you want to connect with like-minded people and find a job in sport that you love, join over 400 people who have landed more than 240 jobs in the sports industry. To get involved, head to www.sportsgrad.com.au forward slash community to join. Fantastic. Now today we are talking about strength and conditioning jobs. Massive topic, Ruben. Huge topic, huge tap topic. One that I kind of broached when I was back doing my exercise science degree at yeah. Deakin. Uh, didn't go down that path, but learnt a lot and have a good empathy for that space. Absolutely. Now, who are we hearing this from today? Yes. Now, today we've had some input from our good friend, Steve Moore, the strength and conditioning coach at the Carlton Football Club. You can find him and learn all about his job and his perspectives on the industry back in episode 163. Um, but his job is to help prepare athletes and put them in the best possible physical condition they can be to perform. So we're, we're going to dive into all the specifics. Fantastic. And why is it important? Well, it's important because these athletes have got to physically prepare and mentally prepare to endure the rigors of elite sport. These guys put themselves through so much on game day uh, and every little bench press, every little bit of visualization or every little prehabilitation goes into keeping them on the park for longer and putting more output once they're out there so they can ultimately win games of football win games of soccer win games of cricket whatever you're trying to achieve the strength and conditioning coach is powering the bodies that's winning premierships Love that. Powering the bodies, that's winning premierships. <laughs> that's a good, uh, good statement. Now, what do you do day-to-day -day in strength and conditioning? Yeah, so day-to-day -day you're prescribing and delivering strength and power development exercises to athletes. So you're running their, their program. Uh, match day you're leading the on-field warm-up, so you're getting them prepped and primed, ready to perform. Um, you're doing the development of game-specific attributes such as uh, speed and agility. So these would be more sort of uh, e little exercises and drills to help you perfect those skills rather than just, you know, yep. your straight sort of bench press. Uh, and then you are collaborating to contribute to a high-performance department, which includes other areas such as medical or um, biomechanics. You've got to work within a high-performance team to bring all the different elements together. Love it. Um, you mentioned there's some of those grooves, but who are you specifically working with day to day? Yeah, so let's take Steve, for example. He's in the football department. He's dealing with the staff there. So you've got coaches, you've got operations staff, you've got analysts, you've got wellbeing staff, nutritionists, the list goes on. Um, you've got a high-performance staff as well. So you've got your high-performance manager, your rehabilitation coaches, your physiotherapists, your osteopaths, your trainers, your fellow strength and conditioning coaches, and, of course, your athletes love it mate and uh in regards to where you do this job they, i would imagine there'd be a few different spots that you'd be located throughout the week yeah so if you like steve you're in a professional sporting club over at uh princess park at carlton hq or you're in the training grounds or the stadiums around australia depending on what opponents you're playing at the time and when you're in those grounds you are you know, most of the time you're in the gym helping them up in the change rooms, getting them prepared or on the ground, leading the warm-ups. It's a pretty good role for those who don't like to just sit at the desk all day. Absolutely. You're up and about, you're on your feet. Um, and how can you get this job? Well, there's kind of th three key things that Steve has outlined you've got to be good at. Number one is communication. Number two is critical thinking. And number three is work ethic. And behind all that, you've got to have a knowledge of what you're talking about, which can be driven by a Bachelor of Exercise and Sports Science, which they can do a great job of delivering. Number one department in the world for sports science of uh uh, which I believe, Ryan, is that right? That is absolutely correct. And we love Deacon for their support. Mm. Amazing. Well, if you want to hear more of Steve, 
chuck on episode 163 it's a cracker episode uh he gives us a really really good insight into mm. this so if you want to hear more uh feel free to put that on wherever you listen to your podcast Alrighty, righty we'll connect with us on linkedin plus be sure to jump into the sports Grad community where you can find us there head to our website at sportsgrad.com.au slash community to join or head to the link in our show notes also if you love the show we would love for you to rate the show five stars wherever you listen to your podcast subscribe on apple or follow on spotify thanks for listening we'll see you next time